First question's from Tegan. He says, hi, Joel. Just wondering what happened with Ricardo and you parting ways. You had a very successful show. I hope all is well with you uh, both going forward. Um, yeah, look, uh, this is a post that we put out earlier. Uh, I think it was a Sunday last week, a week ago. Um, so Ricardo, he put this post out, just which just said... Just a quick note to say thanks to Joel for his work on the arc with Ricardo Bosi. It was a great ride and wish, we wish him all the best for the future. Australia One will continue to address the issues of the day with a new free-to-view program covering local, state, national, international politics as we build up for the next federal election. Stay tuned and we'll let you know when we're ready to go. Australia One, our best future. Good on him. That's great. Um, I, I wish them the best of luck in, in doing the show. Um, I love to see other people step up in alternative media and do this. Um, and I, I wish them all the best with that. And I, I, I did a, in reply to that because it was, it was, it was almost, uh, it was almost coordinated because we both knew we were doing a post on Sunday. Um, I, I then replied to that with, by saying over 12 million views in 20 episodes, 70.2% of people first saw Ricardo on the Ark, 101,000 people follow Ricardo Bosi's Facebook page, making it the 29th biggest page, second to Gladys Berejiklian's herself. It was a pleasure working with Ricardo Bosi and the Australia One Party on the Ark, and I wish them the best of luck in the upcoming federal election, particularly in Queensland. The Ark will be continuing to shed a light on the issues facing Australia, and we will be entering the new season of the show with more content and new guests. And all of that is true. We are. Um, I can't wait to um, to the new chapter of the Ark. Uh, I think it was about, uh, and I, I hope Ricardo will forgive me saying this, but I think it was about a little over a month ago. Ricardo came in, and we we're having a discussion about um, what he's basically doing, because uh, we both know there's probably going to be a federal election this year, maybe even in, in November, but it could technically be as early as August. That's the thing. Um, and uh, I basically was asking how the party's going and this and that. And uh, I made it very clear that I won't be joining Ricardo in Queensland, because as you guys know, he ran in the Queensland election. And uh, as he said on camera, um, I do believe the law is that you have to move up there and you have to, you have to be up there if you run in that election. Um, that's my understanding of it. Um, but, uh, I, I, I said to him, it's great to hear, but, uh, I probably won't be moving up there. You know, I, I have a house to keep. I've got a lot of, I do have a lot, a ton of bills to pay here and, uh, I can't, I can't leave my family, uh, at, at this time. So uh, whenever this election is, so I wish, I, I said, look, I won't be joining you in Queensland. And I've been looking for a replacement for months. I mean, when I was doing the Queensland tour, I was meeting with people up there to find a, like an ARC replacement for, uh, Ricardo and A1 up there. So it's not, not, none of, this isn't a surprise guys. This is, um, this is, this is really good to see because I want to see other people step up as well in every, every state um, pursuing truth like Monica Smith does in Victoria very well under Reignite Democracy. And um, this is really, really healthy stuff. This is what I want to see. I want to see a strong country where lots of individuals, as Ricardo's book says, um, uh, helps them get their stuff together as an individual and become very powerful contributors of to society. Um, and that's what we need. Now, um, however... I need to focus on my state. I live in New South Wales. I am staying here. And as far as I'm aware, the only parties that I could kind of back right now is Australia One, if they have candidates. I don't know of any candidates yet in Australia One in New South Wales. I'm not saying there won't be. I'm saying I'm not, I don't actually have an insight into the running of A1 despite the fact I had the show with Ricardo. I mean, I stayed right out of it. I was never a member. Um, and I liked it that way. I, I, like, I like the separation between my parties and the media. I, I don't like what we see with the mainstream media and the, and the big parties. You sometimes see collusion and I hate that. Um, but with Ricardo, I, I genuinely, I, I don't know of any candidates running for Australia one in New South Wales. I hope there is because Australians need... Uh, they need an alternative that's going to be way better than these major parties. So at this stage, I know there's definitely going to be candidates for One Nation, which is a party I can definitely say, yep, go for. And if, if A1 comes with some, then great. I'd love to meet the candidates too and maybe do a show with them. Um, in terms of the other parties, 
the Christian Democrat Party is a disaster right now. They're still going through a lawsuit, which uh, and that that's that's crazy. Uh, what's happening there? They're in a, a complete complete debacle and uh, i've often talked about this i don't like to go into depth because i hate rubbing salt into the wound but it's a disaster over there the federation party i don't know of any candidates running on the federation party i, I haven't met anyone in the federation party recently um so i mean i don't i don't have an inclination to um to vote for them yet maybe i'll do some more research um what are the other parties i mean we know about liberal labor um greens and uh, nationals not interested i put them all last Green's absolute last. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's it. I can't think of any parties. But this is the thing. I am very, very worried. I am incredibly worried. There are good people that we've talked about on the show, Ricardo and I have talked about on the show, that are in trouble in New South Wales. I mean, we've got Joel Fitzgibbons, a man of labour, who helped to moderate the radical green agenda of the Labour Party. He's been completely sidelined, basically. Who knows if, he, if he's even going to make pre-selection. To win, he's he's electorate in New South Wales, I think, in the Hills area. You've got recently resigned Craig Kelly. He's in trouble. What's he going to do? I don't know. Um, he's he's going to be an independent in his area. I think he can win as an independent. Maybe he'll need a bit of help. What? Who else have we got? We have got Jim Molan. Jim Molan. He's he's someone that's tried to secure our strategic oil reserves. Um, he's someone that's tried to help us have a cohesive plan to address. Uh, our military strategy for Australia. Um, these are all people. And he's, he's, in a, he's in a tough spot, Jim Mullen, as well. He got the most amount of votes below the line. He didn't manage to get a Senate seat in the last election because they put him in the unwinnable spot, I, f I think, number four or five. And uh, he's, but he's been sitting in Senator Sinodinus's seat, who was a senator who went to... Uh, he had to resign his position to... Jim Mullen because he went to America. Sinodinus, he went to America so he could fill Mike Pompeo's job of, you know, representing Australia there, ambassador to America. Um, and so we're in a situation where basically I'm very worried about New South Wales and where things are going because the parties, as I said, not many candidates for A1, some candidates for One Nation, but not in every electorate. We've got some scattered people like Joel Fitzgibbons, like um, also we've got we've got Craig Kelly and we've got Jim Mullen, and we've also got people in the Liberal Party and Labor Party as well in the Senate that are also being pushed back. We've got Conchetta Firavanti Wells, who's the Liberal Party senator who might be put third or fourth on the Senate candidacy seat, which is not good. It's an unwinnable position. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that. She's a good senator. She's batted for a ton of uh, policies, and um, especially on religious freedom, which is something I've talked with Dr. Con Cafetaris a lot with on the show, on Thin Ice. And um, we've also got, in the Labor Party, we've got, uh, ooh, what's her name, Joel? What's her name? Another senator. I can't remember her name right now. So they're going to put her third or fourth. This is a woman who didn't vote yes on the um, same-sex marriage thing. She, when the vote came around in 2017, she actually didn't vote. And in, in, in the Labor Party terms, you never vote no, you just don't vote. That's like your no vote. Um, and that is uh, not something I want to see. She's also someone who's been good on religious freedom. I don't like seeing that. I don't like seeing that at all. And the more that I see the mainstream parties getting rid of these really good people for moderating their parties uh, to what the Australians want, um, the more I get frustrated and I want to help empower them. And so my focus is more towards New South Wales um, and I want to really empower them there. And I wish A1 the best of luck. A lot of people have been reading into this too much, I think. Um, but as I said, this has been a few weeks in the making in terms of what's happening with uh, Ricardo going to Queensland and his electorate being in Queensland. And um, I wish them all the best of luck. And I can't wait to see their new show and how that progresses. And, uh, and if you're in other states, guys, honestly, if you have the means, if you have the ability, if you have the skills to start a show like I did on The Ark and I'll continue to run here, please just do it. Go and do it. Just start it up. Start talking. Start having conversations. You will make mistakes. That's okay. I've made mistakes. But you need to keep moving forward. That's how you're going to actually progress the nation and help save the nation. Um, you, you've, you, can't, you can't keep saying what if. 
You've got to leave nothing in the tank. That's what we say in rugby. Leave nothing on the tank. Leave it all on the field. Just go for it. And that's what I want to see more of. So I hope that answers your question in a very long way, Tegan. I, I gave it a long answer because a lot of people, a lot of people have been very, um, uh, they've been reading into it too much. And I'm like, guys, I'll explain on the next podcast, but he needs to focus on his party and his Queensland. I mean, A1's not even actually registered yet as a party yet. That still needs to be done. Um, and so they've got a, he's, they've got a ton of work to do. I'll just put, I'll put it that way. Um, question from Philip. He says, hi, Joel. I understand you not being able to answer every question from last week, but I'd still like to hear both yours and Ricardo's view on the maniac Bill Gates, the recent revelation on him becoming the largest land holder in the US and his insane push for synthetic meat has really got me peed off. Is there any way we can stop this lunatic and what can we do here in Australia to mitigate his influence here? Regards, Phil. Um, he is a maniac, isn't he? Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's, um, he's the biggest landowner. And fun fact, I, I might have said this on the show already, 